Hello and welcome. Today we're working on accounting concepts. So we're in really chapter one of accounting, the financial accounting course or the accounting basics. And so there are several concepts that we need to know. Um, it, it doesn't really help your understanding of accounting at the very beginning, uh, but this is in the first chapter a lot of times. And a lot of times you'll be tested over this. You may not care about this yet, but your professor does. So you might be tested on this. So there's a some terms that you need to know um, and, and the more accounting you take the more that you'll know um, these concepts and terms so we'll work pretty quickly on this to make sure you know what's going on now we're in chapter one of financial accounting and we've got several uh, articles and videos I'm working my way through all the uh, different chapters so that way you have a complete accounting course uh, that's going to help you um, make it A in accounting, pass accounting, uh, do really well, and so let's get started. Now, accounting concepts, a lot of these terms, let's just go through them one by one. Now, the accounting concepts in the United States are defined with GAAP, which is Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, and the organization is the Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASB, F-A-S-B. And so we have several that are, that are listed, so we all kind of understand the basic rule books of accounting. So let's talk about um, them as we go along. We'll just go through them really quickly. I'll give you a link. This is my article on Finally Learn, so I'll give you a link. So you can always go back and, and look at this. Now, the business entity concept is the idea that the business is separate from its owners, so we keep accounting records separate uh, just for the business. It doesn't matter how big the business is, the business is going to be separate. The next one is the idea of a going concern. And so sometimes uh, you'll hear um, a company called a firm or a concern. And so a going concern is the idea that the, we make the assumption the business will continue to exist and remain in business unless we have evidence to the contrary. So that way we can have things like uh, accounts payables and receivables, accounts payables that are due in nine months. Well, if you think the business is going to close, then uh, that doesn't really matter. The next one is monetary unit. And so we, even though a business, think about Apple, they probably sell in all the countries in the world. I know Coca-Cola sells basically in every country in the world. And so they're not only receiving dollars, but uh, Mexican pesos and um, French euros and German euros and British pounds and so on and so on and so on. But if you look at their financial statements, it's all converted into one monetary unit, the US dollar since they're a US based company. So we have an idea that we put everything into one common currency uh, for a company. Now, if you look at a European country, they're gonna convert everything into euros. The next one is the idea of measurement concept. So how do we measure our assets? Remember our five types of accounts are assets and liabilities and equity and revenues and expenses. We talked about this every time we talk about accounting, we're going to talk about the five types of accounts. Well, measurement says, how do we um, record assets? Well, typically they're at the original cost. However, some uh, are recorded at their fair value. So we basically have either the historical cost, the original cost, or the fair value. And a few things like um, stocks that are traded on, on a stock exchange can be recorded at their fair value, but most things in accounting are recorded at their original historical cost. All right, keep on going here. Periodicity is we make the assumption that we can divide an accounting life of a company into months and quarters and years and we can look at each year, that's our maximum length of time, and then we can pair, compare 2020 with 2021, with 2022, and so on. So we just make it a simple assumption. We can divide the life of the business into meaningful time periods. The next one down is the matching principle. The matching principle says that we want to match <clears throat> revenues and expenses in the same period. You know, it takes money to make money. You've heard that expression. Well. In accounting, we would basically say it takes expenses to generate revenues. And so they, the revenues must be matched with the expenses that they use to create them. Next one is objectivity. We want information that is objective. And that means 
it should be independent. You and I would get the same numbers if we looked at it independently. Uh, we should be able to verify it free from bias. Um, not because you really like the company, you think you'll, you'll have more sales or more profit. It just needs to be an objective number that everyone could agree on. Um, and so the objectivity is kind of a goal. The next one is full disclosure. The full disclosure principle or concept is we want to provide all the relevant information that must be uh, provided in the accounting information. So we want to provide all the information that's good for making decisions. The goal of accounting is to try to provide financial statements so people can make decisions. The next one down is consistency. Consistency is the idea that um, the accounting methods and the accounting principles and the assumptions and, and all the things we do in accounting should be consistent from year to year so we can compare one year with another year, one company with another company, and that's important to be consistent, not just create new ways of doing thing every year. The next one is conservatism, the idea that we want to estimate low, maybe any potential gains, maybe not estimate any gains, but, but estimate potential losses. If we think we, we're going to have a loss, then we go ahead and estimate that now, but not recognize any gains or, um, or revenues too early. Now, what we're really concerned about in conservatism is overstating assets or overstating net income. So we'd rather wait until the, um, the revenue happens or the profit happens to recognize it. But if there's a chance for a loss, we go ahead and recognize that a little early. All right, materiality is the idea that it has to make a difference. So if it's material to a decision or to an action, then it makes a difference. And usually we talk uh, in terms of dollar amounts or money uh, amounts where large amounts are material. Um, for a company, let's say a big company like Walmart, um, $1 million is not very material to Walmart. Now to you and I, maybe the $1 million would be material. Trust me, $1 million would be very material to me. It makes a difference. But for a big company, you know, you're not worried about uh, showing things to the penny because that doesn't really make any difference. So um, small items are insignificant or are immaterial. Large items are material. So we just have a, we have to have a standard. We're not looking at things to the penny. We're looking at things in a material way. So Walmart would report things in the millions of dollars. So anything less than 1 million is just not worth it. It's not material. Now we've got lots of financial accounting lessons. Uh, this has been Introduction to Accounting, one of the videos, one of the articles that we have. I'll give it the link to it below, but thanks for watching. Good luck in financial accounting. We'll see you on the next video, see you on the next article. Thanks for watching.